A. Aubrey Bodine was born in July 1906 in Baltimore and was one of four children. He began working as a messenger at the Sun Papers when he was 14, making $8 a week. Within three years, he took his first steps into his lifelong passion of photography. In his lifetime, he became one of the most celebrated photographers in the country, winning awards and accolades over his work. Bodine favored pictorialism as his photographic style. This style was known for seeking the beauty in the work over the stark reality of it. As a featured photographer for the Baltimore Sun, this was allowed since he was illustrating the artistry of the shot. Long before the advent of Photoshop, Bodine adjusted his pictures to achieve the effect he wanted. This included adding clouds or painting out power lines. Adding these touches gave a depth to the photographs creating an idealized version of the objects that few have been able to recreate. His pictures included the beauty of the Chesapeake Bay as well as that of Baltimore City. He loved to take pictures of people in various places, but didn't mind taking a picture or two of royalty, or even a president's little brother. It didn't matter the age of the person, the youngest or the oldest. It didn't matter if they were working hard at their jobs or if they were playing even harder. Enjoying the simple things like steam crabs and a beer, riding a bike, playing checkers, or even praying. He captured the gleaming facades of the new and the crumbling decay of the old and the abandoned. No matter the location of the shot, a. Aubrey Bodine made magic happen in shadow and light. Bodine didn't just limit himself to the Eastern Shore or Baltimore City. He traveled the globe, but mainly in the Mid-Atlantic region to create his works. But it was the photos taken within Baltimore County that drew my attention the most. These were the places that I had been in. I drove by some of these locations every day never realizing that he stood in this place to take a photograph so many years ago. This map shows the 15 different locations I chose within Baltimore County where Bodine took pictures. They range from the farmland in the heart of horse country, Worthington Valley, to Garrison, across to the county seat, Towson, and then north to the Maryland line. The black and white photographs you will see are his works. The color photographs are my attempts to recreate the same shot. Sometimes it was easy, other times not so much. Come with me now on a journey to see what Bodine saw through his lens and how they look today. The first picture is of the Green Spring Valley Hunt Club. They're pictured on a dirt road riding to the hounds. On the left of the picture you will see an octagonal house. Today, the road is paved and known as Piney Grove Road, but you can still see the same house on the left side through the trees. The next image is called the Blessing of the Hounds. Held just around the corner from the octagonal house stands St. John's Episcopal Church. In this image, you can see the priest performing the blessing as the riders look on. St. John's is still in operation today, standing at the corner of Piney Grove and Butler Roads. Bodine took several pictures at this next location, Sagamore Farm. This was the home of native dancer. The farm itself was originally owned by Alfred G. Vanderbilt, grandson of Cornelius Vanderbilt. Sagamore Farm was given to Alfred as a birthday gift. Today, Kevin Plank of Under Armour owns the farm. Horses will no longer be raised and trained here as Mr. Plank is converting the pastures into tillable land to plant corn and rye for his Sagamore Spirits line. Horses are a cornerstone in Worthington Valley. The Hunt Cup, a point-to-point -point steeplechase race, is held here annually. This 14-mile race requires the riders and the horses to jump over several fence obstacles during the course of the race. In this picture called Dismount, the rider didn't successfully make the jump at gate 13. The photo you see here was taken a week before the race in 2021. You can see the flags that mark the area for the jump.
Traveling from Worthington Valley, we next head to Garrison Forest in St. Thomas Episcopal Church, my home parish. This is one of the oldest Episcopal churches in Baltimore County still in use. It was created as a chapel of ease for the settlers of Garrison Forest. Passing by this beautiful church, you would miss some of the stunning stained glass works done by Lewis Comfort Tiffany found inside. The triglyph has a hidden lily that appears only when the sun hits the panel in the correct way, usually at Easter. Another features a little boy talking to a hidden angel that appears when the sun strikes it. Many famous Marylanders are buried at St. Thomas, including Samuel Owings and Hetty Carey Pegram Martin. The Trentham House was built by Reverend Thomas Craddock in 1745. Reverend Craddock was the first rector of St. Thomas Episcopal Church. The octagonal bathhouse is what you see on the left-hand side. It was rebuilt after a fire in the mid-1800s. Today, the paint is gone from the stone, stone facade but the beauty of the buildings still remain. It is now home to a local business. Taylor Hall was once considered to be in Cockeysville, but is now inside of 695 in Lutherville on Falls Road. The house is considered to be a spyglass house, as its subsequent additions to the main house are smaller than the previous one, given the appearance that the house could collapse into each other like a spyglass would do. It is still standing and is a private residence in Lutherville. Traveling north into Towson, we come across the gatehouse to the Shepherd Pratt Hospital. When Mr. Bodine took this picture, the gatehouse was the main entrance into the hospital grounds. Today, the gatehouse still stands, but cars no longer pass through it. A grand entrance to the hospital complex sits just to the right side of it, but visitors can still walk under its arch. A stone's throw away from the Shepherd Pratt campus is Towson University. Stevens Hall is one of the main buildings on campus. This picture of Stevens Hall was taken when the university was called Towson Teachers College. When I attended, it was Towson State University. Towson University, as it is now known, has grown and places like Stevens Hall are being expanded to accommodate students, faculty, and staff. In the heart of Towson sits the Towson Courthouse. This is the location of our county council and our county executive. The front lawns are still a perfect spot to spend a lunch hour on a beautiful spring afternoon. The last stop in Towson is Hampton House. Nicknamed Ridgely's Folly, the house was built in the 1780s by Captain Charles Ridgely. At the time of the completion in 1790, it was one of the largest homes in America. Hampton House is now a National Historical Site. Perched on the highest point in the property, you can get sweeping views of Towson from the lawns. Open to the public, the house is a museum, and the grounds, while less than what they were when Captain Ridgely owned it, are still just as beautiful. Leaving Towson, we head north on York Road to a little church on the hill, Sherwood Episcopal Church. When Mr. Bodine took this picture, it was December of 1950, and it was just Sherwood Church then. The church and the tombstone haven't changed, and it's still a functioning church in the heart of Cockeysville. Many of Cockeysville's founding families are buried here, including the Tyrees, Merryweathers, and Cockies. Continuing our journey north, we come across a little church on a small triangle of land. Founded in 1871 on an acre of land purchased for $5, Cedar Grove United Brethren Church was founded. After the United Brethren and the Methodist Church merged, it was renamed Cedar Grove United Methodist Church. Today, that little church still stands and it is sandwiched between Cedar Grove Road and Mount Carmel Road. It is known as the pretty little white church with the red roof. Our next stop will take you down a backcountry road in the Hereford Zone. Throughout the zone, as it's affectionately called, there are many one-lane bridges. This one was on Bunker Hill Road. When Mr. Bodine took this photo in 1958, the covered bridge was still in use. Sadly, in the early 1970s, the bridge was burned down. 
All that remains are the stone ramps of the bridge itself. This is now located inside the Gunpowder State Park in Hereford. Our final stop is all the way up in Freeland, Maryland. The Gunpowder Baptist Church is located at the corner of Middletown and Freeland Roads. While the congregation built a new church across the street, the old church still stands. It is said that Mr. Bodine would often carry sticks with him to move branches out of the way that blocked a shot. Trying to recreate this picture, I completely understand why he would do that. Sadly, A. Aubrey Bodine passed away in 1970. Others have tried to mimic his style, but few can even come close to the artistry that he created. And while those photographs may have been embellished for those artistic purposes, they still capture a moment in history that, like him, are no longer with us. But thankfully, we still have these photographs. Mm -hmm.